Hey, welcome to Fire by Night. I'm your host, Blaine Bartel. We're excited that you've tuned into the program, and we're talking about a very important subject today. The title of the program is Sudden Fear. We've got a lot of special guests, comedy sketches, the adventures of Doug and Clarence, and we're going to be premiering a music video at the end of the show that is unlike any Christian music video you've ever seen. It's done by a man named Mark Lowry. You don't want to miss that. You know there's a scripture. It's found in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 25 and it says, do not be afraid of sudden fear. And you know what? There are several sudden fears that this generation is dealing with. Fears that maybe they didn't deal with 30, 40, 50 years ago. In fact, the top three fears of young people today are as follows. Number one, the loss of a parent. Number two, nuclear war. And number three, the threat of AIDS. The question is, how do we deal with and even overcome our fears and have the courage to live in this world today? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about on this edition of Fire Benight. Stick around. Rangers and Rangerettes. Let's get wrong camera, Bob. My name is Ranger Bob. You remember my first two videos, don't you? Cooking Made Easy for the Average Welder and Ranger Bob's Dating Tips. Well, I'm here to announce my brand new video series, No Fear A Loud. Woo! Did I scare you? Oh, See, I told town. you, you need to get it. You'll learn how to quit being a scaredy cat of dogs. Get it? I just made it funny. <laughs> Like Ranger Tim here. He's afraid of dogs. And them there dogs know it. Just watch what happens. See? It's all in the way you approach things. I'll show you pointers on how to approach even the most deadly of dogs and come out unscratched. <laughs> A common fear of little old ladies is crossing the street alone. We'll give you tips on how to use your courage to help them old ladies make it across those dangerous thoroughfares. Mm -hmm. Snap, crack a pop. Which reminds me, why did the little old lady cross the street? Oh, like Tell we us, care. Because she was trying to catch her chicken. <laughs> That's two funnies in a row. We guarantee, after viewing this video, that you will have no problem escorting a senior citizen successfully across a busy intersection. Give them dear old ladies happiness and peace of mind, knowing that there are fearless, helpful citizens on the street today. We'll even discuss one of the most humongous terrors among the general population of the world today. The fear of heights. We'll start with them itsy bitsy heights first, like a common everyday curb. And then we'll end on the granddad of all heights, the top of this here building. I'll prove to you that you can stand on the edge of a skyscraper like this and experience absolutely no scary butterflies. Congratulations, Tim, because you're facing your fear head on. Mmm, another batch of fresh grape jelly. Oh boy, this one hour high tech video is guaranteed to take the willies out of you. Or your $49.95 will be returned with a 15 page questionnaire for you to fill out explaining why you didn't like it. <laughs> Another happy customer. Don't be afraid to rob me for my Ranger Bob's No Fear A Loud video. And remember, you got nothing to fear unless your check bounces. <laughs> Hey, a very important thing that's coming up that we want you all to know about is the National Student Day of Prayer. This year is titled Across the, the Nation and Around the World. This is where millions of young people gather around their high school flagpoles and pray for a move of God in their city. This is very important. In 1993 alone, we had over one million young people in their junior high schools, high schools, college campuses, and even in other countries praying for God to do a mighty work. Acts 2 and 17 says that in the last days, God's going to use young people, so I know he's going to use you. So play your part. Hey, you know, David Letterman every single night has a top 10 countdown. But this, this time on This Just Then, we have a top three countdown. Here it is, the top three reasons why you should pray around your pole. Number three, this is a great opportunity to miss out on the school lunch. The number two reason why you should pray around your school pole is you get a chance to hold hands with that person that you really, really, really like. And the number one reason why you should pray around your high school pole on the National Student Day of Prayer is because the devil doesn't like it. <laughs> hey, that was good, but I'll see you next time. This is Lee Wilson. I have enjoyed it, enjoyed it very much. We'll see you next time on This Just Then. I'm 34 this year. I'm getting old, y'all. I'm starting to really enjoy cafeterias. 
And I have this urge every now and then when I put my britches on to hawk them up to here. <laughs> my grandfather used to walk around like that. I told him if he'd cut that thing that held his shoes together when he bought them at Kmart, he could take bigger steps. But the thing is, it's not that I'm 34, it's just that I'm still single. And it's not that bad. You know, Jesus was single. I tell people when they say, you know, when are you going to get married? I say, listen, every time you pray, you're praying to a single adult. And don't you forget it. Hey, we're back. And when you think about fear, you also have to think about its opposite, which is faith. And really, they have a similar definition. Believing in something that you cannot see. Fear believes in Satan's power or the power of evil to destroy you, whereas faith believes in the power of God and his goodness to save you and to preserve you. One of the greatest military leaders of all time was Joshua. And as he set out to do one of the great military conquests of his day, God spoke to him and said, Joshua, fear not, for I am with you. And as you set out in the conquest of your life, it's important to remember that God is with you, and if he is, you don't have to be afraid. Something to think about. Right now, we're going to meet some young people who are going to tell us like it is. Guys, we're going to tell like it is. We're going to be talking about fear on this particular like it is. Tell us... What is your definition of fear? <laughs> Here we go. This is Sarah. She's going to define fear. fear. All right. This is my fear. Fear to me, in a sense, is like a lack of trust. Well, fear to me is your realization of what could happen, and you have no idea what the outcome is going to be. You have no control over the situation. Just the fact that you know that stuff's going to happen, but you're not quite sure how exactly it's going to happen. Okay. okay. All right, well, let's, let's get personal. We all uh, are very philosophical here today. Let's talk about your personal fears. What are, think about some of the greatest fears that you grew up with. I was always afraid of my parents' expectations for me. Um, some of the fears I had when I was growing up was being accepted, you know, having friends and everything like that, and that went on to teenage years. And Have you found a friend since that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you say are probably the greatest fears that maybe the average young person's going through today? They're being pressured into having sex, drinking alcohol, taking drugs. Divorce is a big one too. Um, I know a lot of kids, even in youth groups and stuff, they fear that, you know, to have to go through that. One of the fears that I think all of you should have, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all of you should fear something that can kill teenagers today, and it's called AIDS. Do you think that young people should be afraid of AIDS today? For me, I don't have to worry about getting AIDS through sex or needles because I'm saving myself for marriage and I don't do drugs. Any type of sin, there's always a consequence. And I think not just with, with AIDS or whatever, you know, through sexual um, diseases or anything like that. Any, any type of sin, you're going to have to deal with the consequence. You know, it hasn't come into my life or anything like that or I don't have friends that have it, but it is, you know, it's a frightening issue. Right now, I have a friend in Romania who wrote me a letter and said, Ryan, I might have AIDS from taking care of these little children who had AIDS from their parents. You know, it, AIDS, you don't have to take drugs, you don't have to have sex to have it. It just happens to anybody. And that's what is really frightening. best Christmas gift I've ever gotten in my life was a set of horrible, ugly teeth. I did not find these in Bill Gaither's cup. I had them made. My brother owned a dental lab for a while and he made these for me and when I put them in, it just changed my whole personality. <laughs> Let me come down there so you can really get a look. Hey, baby. I, went, I waited till I got these before I went to my new dentist. 
I popped them in. Of course, I went by the Waffle House first, you know. Of course, no one noticed. I made my dental appointment. Busted in that door. And I noticed two little kids were playing in the floor. And there was a mother over there reading to her little kid who was all nervous about seeing the dentist. And then I noticed back in that back corner, there were two teenagers who had braces and acne. And everybody was having a good time until I busted in the door. I walked in and pronounced loudly, hey! I'm Mark Lowry. I got a 10:30 appointment. <laughs> that nurse threw that clipboard at me like body contact might cause tooth decay or something. <laughs> she said, "You're gonna have to fill this out." I said, "I'll be happy to, ma'am." <laughs> I went over and sat by that uh, lady who was reading to her little kid. And I was filling out the forms. I said, "I don't know why they make me fill this out. I come in here every week." Nurse after nurse after nurse kept coming in and looking at me. I'd look up to how y'all doing. <laughs> Finally, I took him out and said, this is just a joke. My brother made these for me. She said, leave them in for the dentist. No, 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 no. Bad idea, Clarence. Bad idea. Okay. How about this one? Make Jesus Lord of your life, Cafe. Get it? Make Jesus Lord of your life? Cafe. Hey, Mr. Stanley, dude. Table five wants eggs pronto. Okay. Eggs. Ah, here's some eggs. Dude, there's ashes on here, man. That's okay. They'll think it's pepper. <laughs> Clarence? Do you, do you have any idea how unsanitary that is? You're right. There, that's better. Clarence, someone in this restaurant is going to get some kind of paper. Oh, yeah. Let's see how the Rockies did last night. Clarence, look at this. Uh, you want to back her up about five feet? Flesh-eating disease invades America? Get real. Hey, Colonel Stanley, Senior Collins, if I may so interject, this plethora of foul flesh-eating bacteria hit my hometown in North Dakota. It attacks you when you least expect it, like when you're alone. It starts as a petite blemish on your visage. When you pop it, it gets bigger and bigger until your face looks like this. Oh, time for lunch. Want a bite? Doug, I'm sorry. I was just oh. making a sandwich. Oh. Oh. Here, forgive me. Didn't mean to freak you out. <laughs> You're Who ordered the hind shake? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, thanks for the use of the hand. <laughs> you guys. This kind of stuff is all fun and games until some person's arm rots off. What's the matter, Freddy Cat? <laughs> hey, hi. I'm not a Freddy Cat, all right? I'm not a Freddy Cat. Well, Doug, if you're uh, too afraid, Freddy Cat, to uh, close up tonight, I'll be happy to. I'm not afraid, Clarence. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be okay. Okay, but you're gonna be all alone in the dark. Got you later. <laughs> Did you hire him? And I'm glad I did. <laughs> We're about to enter a dimension. A dimension of sight and sound. It's called fear. Now let's peek into the imagination of one Douglas Collins. And what you're about to see is not real, although it is very real to him. Will he be dominated by the force of fear or the power of faith? Come with me now as we enter into the fear zone.
It's only me. It's only my imagination. Greater is he that is in me than, than he that's in the squirrels. Than, I mean, than, than he that's in the, I mean. Hello? Uh, no name cafe. Excuse me. Could you turn around, please? <gasps> Hello. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the flesh eating demon, and I have come quite simply to feast on your carcass, as it were. Now, in order for me to perform this melodious task, all I ask is that you continue in the fear that you're now experiencing. And please, please, repeat after me. I am afraid of the flesh-eating demon. I'm going to die a horrible death as he eats the flesh off my Christian cadaver. Pardon me, is that a blemish? God! <laughs> Gotta get out of here. <laughs> Hello. Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. There is no escaping this all-consuming fear. You're right. I can't run from my fear, but I can face it. God hasn't given me a flesh-eating spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Well, two out of three isn't bad. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of... No, 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 I kind of know where you're going here. Uh, I wouldn't worry about a thing. If you just want to cast me into that little pork chop over there, I think everything will be just docking. Jesus. You know, every now and then our minds get filled with some garbage. We've all got to learn when it's time to put out the trash. Abstinence. A, B, A, B, S, A, B, S, T, abstinence, A, B, S, T, I, um, A, B, S, T, I, N, N, E, E, N, C, E. A E S T I N E N C E Abstinence <laughs> Abstinence 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 Fear of AIDS There is an answer and you don't have to spell it just do it Hey, we're back, and we're talking on the program today about sudden fear. You know, Jesus told his disciples that in the last days, that, that near the end of the world, that men's hearts would fail them for fear. He said that there'd be a tremendous outpouring, an explosion of fear in the world in these last days, and we've seen that come to pass in the days in which we live. People have all kinds of fears. They fear the unknown. They're afraid of failing. Many people live in a fear of death. I'm reminded of a man named Howard Hughes, 
many of you have heard of him. He was one of the richest men of his day. He had all kinds of money, all kinds of power. He had the power to do whatever he wanted. And yet, in the final days of his life, he lived in just an extreme fear of disease. So much so that he lived in total isolation from the world. He was so afraid that he was going to catch some disease. That fear gripped his life and really took away the very best years of his life. I met a lady uh, a few years back and she lived in such a fear of people that she locked herself in her house and wouldn't come out. She would not even allow herself to see the light of day because she was afraid of confronting or having to talk to people. And that is an unhealthy fear. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. And I want you to know that if you've been experiencing fear, it is not from God. Now, that doesn't make it wrong to have fear. I don't care how great a person of courage you are or anyone else is, everyone deals with fear. The question is, what do you do when that fear comes? How do you deal with it? I remember one time as a young person, we were getting ready to do a mission trip into communist Russia in the early 80s. And God spoke to us, we felt, to take Bibles into Russia to the underground church. And it was a very dangerous thing to do. In fact, people had been killed for doing it. Uh, they'd been apprehended, not let out of the country. And so as we were putting these Bibles on our person, underneath our clothing, on a ship from Japan to Russia, I mean, we were so afraid. Even though we felt like God told us to do it, I mean, our hearts were beating, we were trembling with fear. We finally got to Russia, got off the boat, went to the customs. And I want you to know that as soon as we walked in to that customs area in the Soviet Union, the fear completely left. Yes, we were experiencing fear, but as we walked in, it's like God took away that fear. He's promised to be with us. I went up to the customs guard. First thing he asked me was, do you have any books? Well, I had a lot of books, but I wasn't going to start by telling him about all the Bibles. So I just brought out a couple readers' digests, and I said, here's some books. And he looked at me, and he smiled, and he said, you good boy, you go through. And every one of us made it through there. And we found out that, yes, you will have fear in things that you do that may be a little bit dangerous fear of the unknown, things like that. But God, if you'll trust in Him, will be with you to help you and to deliver you. And you know, one of the other keys that I think we all should know in learning to overcome fear is found in the book of Philippians chapter 4 in verse number 8. And it says there, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, be any praise, think on these things. And one of the keys to overcoming fear is to replace those thoughts of fear that you're dealing with with the thoughts that you find in God's Word. The thoughts that are good and honest and praiseworthy. The thoughts that talk about God's promises. So begin to dwell on what God is doing in your life and on the goodness of His promises to protect us and watch over us instead of all the negative things that you're going through every day. And maybe you're watching the program and you say, Blaine, man, I, I don't really relate to a lot of these things you're talking about because I really don't have any kind of relationship with God or with His Son, Jesus. I want you to know that you're the, just the kind of person that we want to be watching Fire by Night. Because God loves you so much. God loved you so much that Jesus died for you. And all you have to do to have relationship with the God who created you is to call upon Him. And the Bible says that He will answer you. If you want to do that, it's as simple as saying a prayer. In fact, let me just lead you in a prayer right now. Just say this with me. Say, Father in Heaven, thank you for sending your Son Jesus... I believe that he died for me to save me from my sins. And I call upon him now to come into my heart. In your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know God has promised to come into your life and to give you a brand new life. Congratulations. Begin to walk with Jesus the rest of your days. And you know what? Right now, we're going to conclude this program with a music video that talks about a whole different kind of fear. The fear of just being yourself. It's a music video by Mark Lowry. Take a look at it. Thank you for watching Fire by Night. We'll see you next time. At last I found a guide to Christian courtship Now I can be a ladies man of God I knew I'd find my answer in the Bible But this is really odd It 
It says your nose is like a tower, legs like cedar trees. Your hair is like a flock of goats, pomegranates are your cheeks. Your navel's like a goblet, teeth like little sheep. If Solomon can say it, baby, baby, why not me? Now, old King Solomon was quite in love. The man had over seven hundred wives. If he could light a spark reciting these lines, well, maybe I should try. Hey, girl, your nose is like a tower, legs like cedar trees. Your hair is like a block of goods, pomegranates are your cheeks. Your navel's like a goblet, teeth like little sheep. If Solomon can say it, baby, baby, why not me? Yeah, yeah. Why do they slap me down? Why do they pass me by? Maybe I'll say it wrong. I'll give it one more try. Pomegranates are your cheeks Your navel's like a goblet Teeth like little sheep If Solomon can say Baby, baby, why?